Welcome to this lesson on an intro to circles. So let's think about this. Number one, are all circles the same size? Write your answer on your paper. Number two, what determines the size of a circle? Write your answer on your paper. And then number three, are all circles the same shape? All right, so let's see what you said. So number one, are all circles the same size? That would be no. There can be big circles and small circles and medium circles. And then number two, what determines the size of a circle? That would be the radius or the diameter, which is twice the radius. And then number three, are all circles the same shape? Well, yes, of course, they're all a circle. So all circles are the same shape, but not the same size. Therefore, all circles are not congruent, but they are all similar. So all circles are similar. They're all the same shape, they're all a circle, but they can be different sizes. Okay, so let's prove it. If you can map a figure to another figure using one of the four transformations or multiples, so transforming it more than once. And just a reminder, the four transformations are translations, reflections, rotations, and dilations. So if you can do that, the figures are similar. So let's see if we can map circle A to circle B using one of the four transformations or multiple transformations. Okay, so first of all, to get circle A to be mapped to circle B, and remember mapping just means placed right on top of the other shape. First, I need to translate it. Let's see, right four and up four. So if I translate it, right four and up four, make this a little bigger so we can see. So we've moved it once, that would be A prime, and it would be about like this. All right, with a radius of one. And then to make it the same size as circle B, I need to dilate it. So circle B has a radius of three. So we need to multiply it or make it three times bigger. So my scale factor would be three. And that would make it exactly the same size as circle B. So first of all, we translated it right four and up four. And then we dilated it by three from the center of the circle. That was our center of dilation. And that maps A directly on top of B. So because we were able to do that, that proves that the circles are similar. And you can do that with any two sets of circles. So therefore, all circles are similar. All right, let's keep going and talk about the parts of a circle. So first of all, a circle is a set of all points that are the same distance from the center point, or sometimes you might hear they are equidistant, which means equal distance. So here's my center, A. So all the points on my circle are the same distance from A. That makes it a perfect circle. They're all exactly the same distance. Next is the radius, and a radius is a line segment from the center to a point on the circle. So here is a radius, there's a center, and there's a point. And a radius is a line segment, so you would label it like that. And by the way, let's go back. This, the symbol for a circle looks like that. So you draw a circle with a center inside, and then the letter for the center. All right, next is a chord, and it's a line segment whose endpoints are on the circle. And it is a line segment, so CD, 
Remember, you can also write DC, or for the radius, you could write BA. The, the letters don't matter for a line segment. All right, and then a diameter is a chord that passes through the center of the circle. So a diameter is really just a special type of chord. And it goes right through the center, and it's still a line segment, so EF. All right. Next is a secant line, and that is a line that intersects the circle twice. So it's a line, it keeps going, and it intersects the circle in two places. Alright, and then a tangent line is a line that touches the circle once, exactly once. The point of tangency is the point where the tangent line touches. So here's my tangent line. And my point of tangency would be point I. Alright, an arc is a piece of the circumference of a circle, or a piece of the outside of the circle. So this is an arc. The symbol for an arc looks like a little arc on top of the letters. And there are three types of arcs. The first one is a minor arc, and that means it's less than half the circle, or less than 180 degrees. A major arc is more than half, or more than 180. And a semicircle is exactly 180 degrees. It's exactly half of the circle. And when you are naming arcs, a minor arc uses two letters. I'm going to write this in a different color. Two letters. A major arc and a semicircle both use three letters. So for example, if I wanted to name this arc MKL, that is, it looks like a major arc, a little bit over half. So I'll use three letters. All right, and then the last one is a sector, and that is a piece of the area of a circle. So it's kind of like a piece of pie or a piece of pizza. It's going to be shaded in, and you name it using the word sector, and then O N P, or you could say P N O, but you do want the N, the center of the circle, to be the middle letter. Okay, you can go ahead and stop the video now and complete parts of a circle practice and check it with your teacher.